Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the show here today. And today I got a pretty interesting uh, topic for you guys. And really, the topic is why the, Tor- the, the Toronto Raptors should, should be the most feared team in the East um, uh, this year. So that's what I want to get into. But before we get into that, I want you guys to make sure you please go ahead and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. And also, please hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content so you don't miss anything. Now, another thing w- uh, worth saying is that this show is on Spotify, so you can definitely check that out in the description below. We're going to put the link in the description below because I know you guys enjoy um, listening to content while you you know do other things. So we got you guys covered on that. That's going to be there. If you have any you know technical issues, just let us know, and Marco and I will do our best uh, to resolve that for you moving forward. Now, in today's video, you know that um, it's, it's, it's Saturday here, it's Saturday morning, um, and I wanted to get this video out because now we're just waiting for the final seed in uh, the Western Conference, and Portland and Memphis are going to be playing today for that game to be decided to see who's going to go in. Now, if Portland wins the game, all they need to do is win one game, and they're already into the Eastern Con- into the, the eighth seed, where they'll face the Lakers. Um, but if Memphis wins, then Memphis has to beat Portland twice, so... Um, that 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 final spot can be decided either today or tomorrow. So, um, essentially, what we're going to do is tomorrow we're going to be releasing our playoff prediction uh, brackets. Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna go through um, a thorough breakdown of every single um, let's say every single um, um, uh, series in the West and in the East, and I'm gonna do my prediction from the first round to the second round to the conference finals, and then I'm going to pick the teams that are going to get to the NBA finals, and then later on in the playoffs, I'm going to do my finals prediction. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I know you guys have been asking for that. Another thing before I I get back into the topic here is that some of you asked if we're going to be live streaming these playoffs, and unfortunately, we can't do that. We're not at that stage yet um, of the channel where we can start doing live streams and all of that Um, for technical reasons. First reason is Currently, I'm, I'm doing this video in Nigeria. Marco's in Italy. In the beginning of the month, next month, I'm going to be in London. So um, I'm going to be there for some months just to be with family and all of that. So me being there, you know there's going to be a time difference. I think the time difference is something like five or six hours. I'm not sure, depending on where you are in the States. If you're on the West Coast, that we're looking at a nine-hour time difference. If you're in the East Coast, it's about six hours. So for me to be covering those games live would be pretty hard if we're just looking at looking at it uh, logistic logistically. So that's going to be kind of difficult. However, we're trying to plan some things in a way where we can interact with you guys in a more live way. But that's something we're going to introduce once we pass 10,000 subscribers, because now we're, we're a little bit too small to be to be um, uh, doing that, to be considering that. So that's something we have planned um, in the future. And eventually, I'm going to come back to the states. And then when I'm on, you know, when I'm stateside, let's say, then it'll be a lot easier for us to do these type of things. But for now, it's a little bit, it's a little hard. And if some of you are wondering why I've been in Nigeria this long, well, first of all, I'm, um, I'm, I'm I was born in the states. I'm, I'm American, but my 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 father's Nigerian, so I can live in Nigeria. But the reason I've been here this long is because because of this, you know, global pandemic. Nigeria hasn't opened their airport since. So um, other countries have, um, but Nigeria's airport should be opening within the next few weeks. So that's the reason I haven't been able to travel out. Needless to say, that's not that doesn't stop me from doing my work and stop us from creating content. Um, we don't make any excuses. In 2020, you should be able to, pre- this type of work, you should be able to do it no matter what. And as long as you have the internet and all of that, you can get stuff done. So I don't want to ramble on too much about that, but I think it's important that you guys have some context behind these videos and the people doing these videos with people. And as we grow as a community, I think it only makes sense that you guys understand sort of the background of, you know, um, you know, the content you consume, at least the people. So that was that. But anyway, let me get back into the content. I'm not going to make this video very long because um, I, don't, I don't need to bore you guys with my voice too long. So Anyway, the reason why I think the Toronto Raptors need to be fair in the East are pr- pretty simple. I have all of my points here listed for you guys that I want to go through. First of all, uh, their playoff experience. Okay, the Toronto Raptors, as of yet, are the only team that has proven that they can win a championship 
at least in the Eastern Conference, okay? All of the other teams, if we look at the NBA standings, and I think I should have it here, in the East, okay? I'm just going to look at the top seeds for now. But in the East, you have the Bucks at the number one seed, and you have the Raptors, and you have the Celtics. Then you have the Pacers, you have the Miami Heat, and then you have the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets. None of those teams have won a championship. None of them have players on there that have been the driving, sort of the catalyst for them winning a championship. Not Boston, not Milwaukee, not the Pacers, not um, the Miami Heat, none of them, okay? Not Philadelphia, not the Brooklyn Nets. Now, the Brooklyn Nets do have a, do have a championship core in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, but obviously you guys know that none of these players are available, so we're going to discount them for the time being. If we're talking about next season, then that's an entirely different argument because then they have stars, superstars that have championship experience and a champion. So that's a completely thing. But for the looking at the field this year, the Toronto Raptors are the only team that have you know um, a championship experience. Now, another thing that worth paying attention to, and why Toronto has a real chance in the East at least, um, is the fact that this there's no real home court advantage in these playoffs. Okay. The seeding for this year has everything to do with matchups. This is a strategic game. Whereas in the past, matchups also, play, yes, there's also the strategic game, the, the, you know, the back and forth chess moves that go into teams matching up. But there's also the, you know, playing away, the road games, road games dynamic that come into play. Playing in a different arena, you're playing against a crowd, you're in a different city, trying to, you know, get into your rhythm, get into get in, get in, get into a routine, and you're there for not too long, and you leave, and all these different things. So there's so many things. There's travel and all these things that you have to sort of um, take into account. Whereas this, all the players are in the same location. So instead, with standings, the only thing standings represent in this particular case is just you know who you who you're going to be playing against in matchups. Okay. I think that's the reason why certain teams are doing certain things towards the end of the bubble, you know, trying to understand who they want to match up with. For, for example, you saw the Clippers make sure they get the matchup with the Mavs at the number, you know, at the number seven and two spots because they, I, I'm, you know, most likely sure that that's the matchup that they want and that's the matchup they feel that they can win decisively. So there's no real home court advantage in this in this particular situation. As I mentioned before. The inexperience of the other teams. As I said, the Raptors have experience, which means the other teams don't have experience. Now, um, I do think that they're real threats in the East, especially with the top four seeds, Miami. You have Indiana as well. Um, but Milwaukee is the big boy of the East, okay? They have the best player in the Eastern Conference and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And by me saying that the Raptors should be fair, they absolutely be, should be fair in, in the standpoint that they shouldn't be taken for granted just for the simple fact that Kawhi Leonard uh, is not there, but Giannis Antetokounmpo still has to be beaten. And last year, they had to get to the finals by going through Giannis, and they have to do the same thing again this year. You know, in all likelihood, I do believe that the the Bucks are going to beat the 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 Nets in the first round. Which, I'll, as I said, I'll get to. We'll get to the playoff predictions uh, tomorrow, I believe. But nevertheless, they still have to go through that team, and they're a really good team. It's not like as if the Milwaukee Bucks are the number one team by chance. Uh, so they're going to have a real challenge in Milwaukee, but for the reasons I've given you before, um, I still think that they should be fared. Now, another thing worth noting is this. For all of this to be true, let's discuss the elephant in the room. And in this case, it's a big elephant, and the elephant is Pascal Siakam, Okay. For Toronto to live up to all of the things that some of us expect them to be able to live up to, Pascal Siakam needs to be a certifiable replacement to Kawhi Leonard. One cannot overlook the fact that Kawhi Leonard is not on that team. We should not assume that, yes, the Toronto Raptors are going to win the championship because they have a good record, so therefore, no. Toronto has always had a good record in the past. I said this in the the previous episode we we published. They've always had a good ep uh, they've always had good um, records. However, the difference last year was Kawhi. I don't care what anybody says. The difference was Kawhi. Why? Because ninety percent of the players on that team were there before Kawhi Leonard even got there. I think probably with the exception of Mark Gasol. I think Mark Gasol was added last year. Um, I think at the trade deadline, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about that. 
So we're not going to overlook the fact that Kawhi Leonard was there leading that team. He led. Let, let, let me let me say this. Kawhi Leonard led the Toronto Raptors to the championship. OK, it wasn't like as if he was there for the ride or he was just an integral part. He was the reason that that team was succeeding. Now, obviously, Fred Van Vliet had to hit some big shots. Pascal Siakam had to come up with some big plays. Um, Kyle Lowry had some big plays. Serge Ibaka came up big in the playoffs. No one is discounting that fact. But Kawhi Leonard was a catalyst. Go look at his numbers. OK, look at his numbers that he put up in the playoffs. And in certain instances, Pascal Siakam was running away from the ball. He wouldn't, he wouldn't take shots. That's the reality. I watched every single Toronto Raptors game uh, last playoffs. So for all of this to be true, Pascal Siakam needs to live up to the moniker that people like Kendrick Perkins are giving him saying that he's better than Paul George. Well, he really needs to be better than Paul George. He needs to put up some really big numbers, at least 25, 26, 27 points a game, seven plus rebounds, you know, four plus assists. His 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 production needs to go up. If you look at his numbers this season, he's averaging 23.7.3 rebounds. 3.5 3.5 assists. All of those numbers need to go up in the playoffs. Okay, so yes, they should be the most feared team simply from a simply from an experience standpoint, right? And simply from the fact that they have a lot of confidence, they're playing with a lot of confidence, and they know how to win. But Pascal Siakam needs to lead. Okay, you're not going to be devoid of Kawhi and think, okay, just going to re-. no, it doesn't work like that. If it, if it was, it would have happened by now, right? It's not just simply the points that he's replacing. Okay, DeMar DeRozan was a 20 plus point score per game for that team. It's not just about the points. It's the uh, is the is the effect that you have on a team that is not measured in the box score and that has to be replaced. So, yes, they should be the most fair team in the East in my opinion because of their because of their their pedigree because because of the fact they've won. But Pascal Siakam needs to play big. It's not like as if he can just be what he is now and then when Kawhi averaged 26 points in the regular season last season he got to the playoffs everything went up he went from 26 to 30 30 and a half you know his rebounding went up by like two steals went up so that's something worth noting as we move forward so this is just my raw opinion on this so what I want to know from you guys is do you agree with all do you agree with the things I've said and do you th- and do you think that Pascal Siakam really needs to step up as a superstar because Kawhi Leonard was not a star. He was not an all-star. He was a superstar all throughout the playoffs last season. So whatever you guys think, please let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and also make sure you hit the notification bell to be notified uh, whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace.